All right, so I'm going to be using the latest version of Xcode 10, which is currently beta 3. And as you can tell, I'm using the beta version of Xcode because I'm recording this far ahead of time. So Apple tends to release the grandmaster or rather the official version of the latest version of Xcode. So in this case, Xcode 10, usually sometime in late September. So if you're watching the course in October, then you should be able to download Xcode 10 straight off the App Store. But if you want to get in ahead of the curve and already start making apps for iOS 12, then you can follow along with me. And in the last lesson, I will have instructions for how you can download the beta versions of Xcode 10 so that you can follow along with me. Now, once you've got Xcode open, we're going to create a new Xcode project and we're going to be choosing iOS and augmented reality app. So I'm going to call my app Pokey 3 d and just check to make sure that the content technology is selected as scene kit and then click next. Now I'm just going to create it onto my desktop, but feel free to place it anywhere you wish. And here we have our brand new AR kit app. So first things first is we're going to go into the art.scn assets folder and I'm going to delete this ship al along with the texture file for the ship because we're going to be using our own 3D assets. And now we need to add our image that we want to detect. Now, in terms of the tracking image, you can use any sort of image or card that you have lying around the house. For example, your business card, somebody else's business cards, playing cards. Now, in my case, I'm going to be using the Pokemon cards that I own. But if you don't own them, you can also just print them out in order to follow along with me. So if you head over to this link, which I'll include again in the course resources list, and it'll take you to a place where you can print out proxy Pokemon cards. So the cards that I'll be working with in this tutorial is the EV UPR 104. And also I'm going to be using the Oddish Bus 4. So these are the two cards that I have that I'm going to be using in these tutorials. Now, if you want to follow along with me step by step, you doing exactly what I'm doing, then just go ahead over here, search for these two cards and just print them out so that you will have a version and then tape them to a playing card. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my phone camera to take a picture of my Pokemon card. And you want to try and get it as big as you can and to line it up squarely. And then I'm going to use AirDrop to send it over to myself. And now I should see that show up over here. And now I can open it inside preview. Now there's just a few things that you need to do when you're taking a photo of your image. Just process it a little bit inside preview to make it easier for the image recognition to work. So the first thing you notice is that on the latest versions of iPhones, the format of the images is something called HEIC. And we need to change this to a PNG. So head over to File Export and I'm going to change the name to Eevee and also the format to PNG. And I'm going to go ahead and save that onto my desktop. In order to edit our photo inside preview, I'm going to click on this edit button and I'm going to click on this sort of prism icon to bring up the adjustment bar. Now over here, I'm going to increase the exposure a little bit so that it's a bit brighter and also increase the contrast so that the images look a little bit more clear and we're getting as much detail as you can see with the human eye. I'm also going to bring up the highlights and the shadows just a little bit. And I'm also going to push the color saturation just a little bit brighter. And maybe the sharpness can go up a little bit as well. And once you're happy, then we're going to go ahead and export this file. You can see that with the later version of iPhones, the format that the images get saved in is something called HEIC. And we want to convert that to a PNG instead so we can use it in our app. And I'm going to rename my photo to EV-Card. And I'm going to save it onto my desktop. And there you can see it. Now that we've got that photo ready, 
then we can head over to the assets.xe assets folder. Remember, we're not going to the art.scn assets because this folder is going to be for our 3D image assets and this one is going to be for our 2D image assets. So once you've got this folder open, you're going to right click inside this section here, this white section below the app icon, and we're going to create a new AR resource group. Um, and I'm going to change the name to call it Pokemon Cards. And now I can drag and drop my new Pokemon card into this section. So here's my EV card, and I'm going to just drop it into here. So now immediately, the first thing you notice is that we get a new warning. And the warning says that AR reference image EV card must have non-zero positive width. And this is because whenever we add a new AR asset, we have to specify a physical width and height for it. So this means that when the AR app is running, it'll be able to roughly know how big this card should be so that it'll know what to recognize. Now, the size I've measured for the card is around 6.5 centimeters in width. So I'm just going to add in 0.065. And you can see the units here are in meters. And once you hit enter, it automatically calculates the height based off the dimensions of the card. So you don't have to enter that in yourself. So now that we've gotten rid of our warnings and we've incorporated our new AR asset, the EV card, this is what we're going to be telling our app to look out for and to track. And to do that, we need to go into the view controller. Now in the view controller, we're going to delete this create new scene and set scene to the view. Because as you can see, this is just using that ship scene that it had before in these template projects. So we don't need that and we're going to delete it. The next thing we're going to do is we need to change the session configuration of our AR session from world tracking configuration to AR image tracking configuration. And this is because we're using a different modality. Instead of looking for planes in the real world, in the vertical or, a or the horizontal plane, we're actually looking for a specific image that we provided. Now, after we've set the configuration, the next thing we need to do is to tell our app about the images that it should track, which are located in here. Let's create something called image to track. And let's set it equal to a brand new object of the type AR reference image. And this is an image to be recognized in the real world environment during a world tracking AR session. This is a new reference image object. And we're going to tap into the reference images method so that it loads all of the reference images in a specified AR resource group. And that's the one that we created just now. So let's hit enter to insert that method. And the group name that we have to provide here is the name that we gave to this folder here which as you can see is Pokemon cards with a space in between. So let's copy that over to make sure we don't make any typos. And let's go ahead and add that as a string. Pokemon space cards. And now we need to provide the bundle. So that's basically what is the location of this group. And we're going to say that you should look inside the main bundle, which is the location of the current project or the current file that we're inside. Now, once we've created those AR reference images, then we can set our configurations tracking images property, which is the set of images to detect for our current AR configuration to be equal to these images to track. And now you can see we come up with a slight problem. The images to track is an optional. And that's because it might just be that when our app looks through the current bundle for something called Pokemon Space Cards, it might not exist. We might have accidentally made a typo here, or we might have actually forgotten to add any cards. Well, in that case, we don't want to crash the app. So let's turn this into an iflet to check to see if there are, in fact, cards. And only if there are, 
do we actually set it to the configuration? Now, the final thing we need to do is to tell the configuration how many images to track. So the maximum number of tracked images. So this is the number that it's going to simultaneously look out for. And in our case, we're just going to set that to one because we only currently have one image that we're playing with. And now we're going to add a print statement and we're going to print images successfully added. Because if this part gets called, then that means that we've actually managed to find our Pokemon cards inside the current working directory, and we've managed to turn it into AR reference images. So let's go ahead and run this app and see if it works. Now, remember that for any AR app, we need to make sure that we're running our app on a physical device because AR apps don't work in the simulator. So let's choose a physical device and let's add a team and go through all of the steps for side loading. Now that I've run my app, I'm going to keep an eye out down here in the debug console. Okay, so there's a number of things that have been printed into here. And usually what I find is that when you're using the beta versions of Xcode, there's usually more log images that are not related to your app. So for example, here it's telling us something about the configuration profiles path is at a certain location, which is not very interesting. And something about reading from public effective user settings. And another one that says a method contents from catalog using rendition key couldn't find the object. This happens in the official versions of Xcode as well, but you see more of these in the beta versions. But I want you to ignore these for now because they don't affect our app at all. And they are not errors and they are not warnings. And they are merely just information that's being spat out by Xcode. The important thing to see here is that our images successfully added statement got called, which means that this was successful and we were able to find our Pokemon cards group and to add it as an AR reference image. So in this lesson, we procured the image to be detected. We took a photo of it and uploaded it to the assets folder and we provided some physical dimensions for it. Now, if you're using the proxy cards, then you don't have to go through the hassle of taking photos and uploading it. You can simply just right click and save this image to add it into your assets folder. But usually when you're working with cards or images, you might need to go through this process of taking a photo of it and uploading it, which is why I wanted to show you the full workflow. Now, in the next lesson, we're going to be using that image to detect it in AR. And we're going to use the detected image to start projecting our Pokemons. So for all of that and more, I'll see you on the next lesson.